Advent greetings to you from St. Benjamin's Lutheran Church in the village of Meadow Creek in Westminster, Maryland. Pastor David Schaefer sharing in this time with you. These midweeks of Advent, these Wednesdays, we will have um, some devotional material that will be good for your reflection on this holy season of Advent. Today, December 2nd, we look to the Magnificat, Mary's Song. In Luke chapter 1, Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. This is the Gospel of our Lord. I'm using some devotional material from an Advent study for adults entitled The Scriptures Sing of Christmas by J. Ellsworth Callis. So what shall we say of Mary's song? Mr. Callis writes, I remember hearing the great missionary statesman E. Stanley Jones refer to this song of Mary's as the most revolutionary document in the world. Try, if you can, to be free from the familiarity of these words in Mary's song and see how it sounds when you hear the words as a freestanding statement. God has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. If a, if a political figure were to speak such lines without identifying their source, he might as well be seen as revolutionary. The words form a powerful platform for social and economic reform. But I'm impressed, Mr. Callis goes on to say, that before making such a statement, Mary's song begins with the adoration of God. Her cry for social and economic upheaval is not a political treatise as such. It is part of Mary's declaration of faith in God. My soul doth magnify the Lord. Her glory is not in a political party, an economic theory, or a social movement, but in the Lord. I dare to submit that the best human reform begins with the adoration of God, set in the spirit of enlightened worship. Mary's song is a revolutionary document, no doubt about it, in its insistence that God will fill the hungry and send the rich away empty, even while taking the mighty from their thrones. But there's no outline for social reform and no plan for bringing about the dramatic changes. Mary is not a Joan of Arc charging into battle. But her song does tell us quite forcefully whose side God is on. God is for justice. God is an advocate for those in need. Is someone being treated unfairly? Be sure that God stands on their side. In somewhat, is someone suffering need, deprived of food, clothing, shelter, freedom, love? Heaven casts it, its vote for such a one. There is nothing impartial about Mary's song. It's prejudiced in favor of the underdog, and it is set against the cruelly comfortable and the indifferent. This is a tough gospel, some might say, much tougher than many of us with our personal prejudice, prejudices want it to be. But it isn't simplistic. In the style that characterizes television's political snippets, does God favor labor? Yes, when labor performs honorably and industriously. 
Is God for management? Yes. When management distributes its profits equitably, and when it respects the environment, God is colorblind and race unconscious, except as one oppresses the other, or except as individuals judge others on the base, basis of the race or ethnicity God has given them. Is God for the learned? Not if they become arrogant in their use of knowledge. Does God then favor the ignorant? Not if they choose to remain in their ignorance. Mr. Callis goes on, It seems to me that God is always seeking to set the score straight, and it seems we're always in need of some straightening. In the world of politics, a courageous reformer comes into office promising to clean out corruption. Unfortunately, reformers so often grow comfortable in power until they need the rebuke that once they enforced on others. We humans must always submit to rigorous self-examination. We have to remember how easy it is for the oppressed to become the oppressor. God is not on the side of power. God is on the side of justice. We can find this reassuring when we are being oppressed, but sobering when power comes into our hands because the exercise of power is so easily turned into its abuse. Mary's song, The Magnificat, was a strange song for an unlearned peasant girl. It's the kind of song a political scientist would want to write if he or she were enough of a poet, and it's the kind of declaration a poet would love to write if the poet knew enough economics. But it comes to us from Mary, the mother of Jesus, a simple girl who has just been affirmed by her older cousin, Elizabeth. Mary's song is a grand song, not only for the Advent season, but for all the year round. It is always the season to magnify the Lord and to rejoice in God our Savior. And it's always time to remind ourselves that God is unalterably committed to justice. Knowing that God is so committed, it is always the season to recommit ourselves to concern for those who are hungry while examining our hearts lest we be among the proud. But especially, Mary's song is an Advent song, because our Lord was born to set all things right in time and in eternity, and we who follow him must be part of that process. Let us pray. In all of our celebrating, O Lord, help us to be sensitive to those who have less with which to celebrate, and show us ways to meet some of their needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next week for our midweek Advent time together, our devotional time, we read scripture from Luke 2 verses 8 through 14, and we center in on concert in a field. Thanks for joining me in this Advent devotional reflection. We look forward to bringing you more. May this season of Advent be full of waiting and watching for the way the Lord comes into our lives daily. God be with you in this Advent time. Thanks be to God.